Are you serious? Are you serious? I want to give you an encouraging word. An encouraging word. I know the world's in trouble. The earthquakes, the volcanoes, the tsunamis, the straight line winds, the asteroids, the meteorites. Oh, I know the sinkholes and the water turning blood red and the wars and the rumors of wars and ISIS and the hatred and the violence and the murder and the madness and the mayhem, of course. But I also know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are blessed going in and blessed going out. If you're part of the body of Christ, if you've been born again, if you've been washed in the blood by the spirit of adoption, whereby you can cry, Abba, Father, you become an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I want to encourage you. Oh, I know things are going to get tough. And matter of fact, when I've studied Bible prophecy, I know it's going to get a whole lot worse. But Christ is coming soon. No man knows the day nor the hour. No, not even the angels in heaven. Not the Son of God, he said, but the Father only. But I want to encourage you to just be strong in your faith and keep pushing forward with the great commission of the love of Jesus Christ. Remember, you are the light of the world. You're a city. You're set on a hill. You can't be hid. Church, we don't need to crawl in a hole somewhere and hide. We don't need to hunker down. We need to branch out. We need to sp speak out. We need to love one another, encourage one another. If there was ever a time, and I don't even have to tell you this, uh, those of you watching on YouTube or anybody watching this on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or anywhere else, you already know there's enough people who are trying to tear down the body of Christ, that you don't need another one of those. What you need is encouragement, an encouraging word. And here's where we'll find it, right here in the Bible. Matter of fact, let me give you seven words of encouragement. Are you ready? Number one, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. I love this verse. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Also in Isaiah 43, verse 2. Love this verse, King James Version Bible. And when thou passes through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee, and when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Listen, things in life can get very tough. It can get hot and heated and contested, and your enemies can surround you like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And you can know this, the Lord is the lifter of your head. In Psalms 3, he tells us that. But let me give you another verse right now, and that would be in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have not I <laughs> commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. All right, so the Lord said, that's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. People will say to me, Pastor Begley, I don't know how you do it. How do you scour the world for current world events and relate it to biblical prophecy on a daily basis and not just absolutely become overwhelmed and despaired by the word, by the, by the information, by the news, by the current events? How does that not just take you down? Because I know the word. I know that if God be for us, who can be against us in Romans 8.31? All right. I know that he can do exceedingly abundantly greater than we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I mean, once you know who you are in Christ Jesus, then you know, and you know there's going to be problems. You know there's going to be an enemy. You know there's going to be opposition. You know there's going to be accusations. You know there's going to be liars. You know they're going to come. But praise God. He said, rejoice when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. 
one guy said to me while I was in California uh, this past week, he said to me, and we had a great gathering. The Carlsbad Fellowship was just unbelievable. But he said to me, he said, you know what? If people would only realize that the greatest way that, that you could ever be flattered is to be cast down. Well, in other words, to be pushed down or to be attacked. It means you're doing something right. And some of you out there, you've been doing a lot of things right. You've been focused. You've been faithful unto the Lord. Matter of fact, let me give you another verse. All right. Here's what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, and even as also ye do. In other words, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do ye do. In other words, just keep doing it. Keep lifting each other, each other up. Keep edifying one another. Keep encouraging one another. Matter of fact, here's what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. He said, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforteth us in all of our tribulation, in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, that's a whole lot of comforting going on, all right? All right, comfort one another as God is comforting us, basically, in matter of, no matter how much tribulation and trial you're going through. I mean, God will never leave you or forsake you, Amen. And it also says this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right? You know you're doing good when you're working in the kingdom of God. Just keep going. It's going to be all right. And I love what David said in Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And then there's one more verse. Let's just throw this one in while we're at it. Psalms 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art with me, he said, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, the Lord's going to be right there. He'll even prepare a table for you in the presence of your own enemies. He'll anoint your head with oil and your cup will run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Your cup runneth over. I said your cup runneth over. For the Lord said, I come to give. The Lord said these words, for the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Walk in the blessing. Encourage one another. Keep looking up. For your redemption draweth nigh. God bless. Give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're not living in the victory, and if the devil's got you beat down, it's time to call on the name of the Lord and start walking in the blessing. Start walking in the high cotton. Start living above the fray in Jesus' name because he'll never leave you or never forsake you, but he'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. God bless.